Realistic rewards can be hard and frustrating to achieve, and so far we have only talked about the patterns we can create in the last chapter. Now let me show you how can I sculpt my brick edges with 5 tips using subs and designer, and how can you apply this to your daily workflow. Now let's get started. As you can see, this is one of the patterns that I show you how to make in one of our previous videos. Now we're going to be using it just to show you how this system I created is going to work with any other kind of pattern and why it is so efficient. So the first step would be to slope our pattern, but we're going to do it in a very specific way, starting with big shapes, as you can see here. So most people, when they want to do edge sculpting for bricks, they just go for a slope and they create a cloud to and this is how they go like they get samples to 32 these two 0.1.31 and this is their edge sculpting at all you need to understand something the more detailed you are about everything you do the better your result will be yes this is a short demonstration but let me show you at the end of the video a real example of one of my latest artwork where i built a, a realistic brick wall so in the first law what we are going to be doing is we're going to go for big shapes as you can see here so right now for example if i replicate this here yes with a parallel noise and i use this an intensity of 0.1 that is what most people would do i'm gonna get a disaster of a result and that's actually quite normal because this low blur is too intense with how it interacts with information so we need to go lower what people believe is that you can move only between 0 0.1 and 1 and that's actually quite a mistake people usually tend to go really high but you know not low enough so in this case i'm using a value of 0 0.008 and this is a secret tip i'm gonna give you when you want to create details like the ones you have here on my 3d view you're not gonna be using let's say common values you're gonna be using really small values that you're not gonna be able to find everywhere so let's see tip number two is gonna be split the intensity yes so you don't want to use only one slow blur with one intensity and just one slope map you want to be really creative and you want to generate variation as i'm doing right here so i'm creating two slow blurs yes with different intensities with the same map i'm using a clouds 2 with a scale of 20 and a blur with intensity of 0 0.1 and a quality of 1. on my flare first slow blur i'm going to use a mode for me because i want to push my edges inwards yes i'm destroying my edges so they look like chip in i'm using samples at 32 and an intensity of 0 0.0025 now the second slow blur is going to be exactly the same but with an intensity of 0 0.0015 and there's these are really low intensities but in one and each other you can see there's a huge change and if i show you what came before you're going to see that there's still a change that's because the map is uh, the slope map is really Really strong and we are using really low low values so that we can have actually more control over it now this is gonna take us to our third tip that is blended masking yeah so blended masking is something really important when creating all of these things because it's gonna allow you to get these details to be actually details remember that when we talk about details we talk about something that is in our material but it's not actually something that is gonna take all of our attention it's gonna be a feature of our material that is going to add in, add value to our production not something that is going to be part of our composition so in this case masking and blended masking is the best how do we do blended masking well for blended masking what you need to do is try to find a branch of your liking yes that has the values you like or the shapes you like and blend it with another noise generator which has more blur information why we want you to have blur information because if it were too hard it would be just too harsh the transition between one and each other see how it goes from here to here this is slightly changed there you may see but so far the transition would be combining noise generator where we have blur information like a parallel noise a gaussian noise or any of these notes and any kind of grunge which has hard information that's a really great way other ways are just by creating a flood field from a flood field you can get a flood field to random grayscale and finally a heatstorm scan with a contrast on one and then the position to choose how many bricks you want them 
to have this intensity. So you can see that in here we are having a node that is allowing us to choose how, how strong we want this to be. So I can keep on pushing this up to choose more bricks to be more destroyed or I can pull it down to have less bricks like that. Now for the fourth step is the variation of slopes. And this is that maybe one of the most important parts of all the tutorial. So the variation of slopes means that we're gonna have to repeat the same process several times with different slopes, with different masks as well, with the aim to sculpt our edges step by step following our references. In my case, in this reference, there was some really small chip as you can see here. So I'm using a black and white spot too, just as it looks, with an intensity of 0 0.0004. Yes. Again, the reason for that is because this uh, map is too strong. If I were to put this to 0 0.1, as more people do, yes, it just gonna be looking really, really bad. You can see it here. So how do I get to those results? Usually what I do, I start at in zero. So let's say again, I went to 0 0.1. Yes, and this is my result. So I start to do this. I start to add a zero. Let's see how this looks now. This is not how I am picturing it. So another zero. Okay, this is getting there, but again, it's still maybe too strong. So at this point, that's where you have to choose. Do I want to do some really nice masking? Yes, like for example, some of what we have here. Let's do one. I'm going to do a pearling noise with a Gaussian. So I'm going to blend them together. My pearling noise is going to be bigger than my Gaussian, and we're going to blend them using a multiply. And we're going to make this by half. The reason for this is because inside each big area of our parallel noise, the, the whiter area, we are going to have other parts that are smaller. And you can see it here. See that inside my whiter areas on my parallel noise, I have like small dots in there as well, which is really nice. So I'm going to replace this as a mask here just to make the transition more soft, as you can see. It's not going to be as hard as one expected, but it's going to still be there. See? And we have fixed it. Other way of doing it is also decreasing even more the amount of zeros, or meaning decreasing the intensity of this. So you have different ways of doing it, you just need to find which one is the best, and for that you need to do a lot of exploration. Now for the fifth tip is the specific masking. And when I talk about specific masking is when we assign a specific mask to each brick on our material. Now how do we do this? First we need to create a noise. In this case I'm using a grunge plaster cracked with a blur of 0 0.6 and a Gaussian noise with a scale of 32 with a levels that has the levels in mid at oh my bad 0.423 and on high at 0.92. I just wanted to have less con like less background noise on the, on the darker so I didn't want this kind of black information here so I'm multiplying each of these just to get this result and to get something different from what we had before <laughs> And this is where you get the specific. When you create a flood field, you can create a flood field to random color. This will assign a different color to all of your shapes. This works exactly like a color ID map. Now the vector warps grayscale is gonna help us displace this mask, yes, to each brick. This means that this noise we just created here, yes, is going to be applied different to each of these bricks depending each color. This means that this orange uh, brick is gonna have a specific, a specific part of our branch map that is gonna be completely different to the brown, this green, and this kind of like blue and cyan here. Now, the more similar the color are, the more is the chance that they might be too close. So you might notice the tiling. So you can always kind of do some random seed to fix this. But when you have so many shapes in one image, it's quite normal that, ha that this happens and you will have some repeating colors that are maybe too close. But again, this is really, really useful for creating this. Now, as an extra tip that I wanted to show you, there's something really important about brick walls that you need to understand in order to make a successful, really good brick wall. What I have just shown you is just a small step on how to create your own brick wall. As you can see, this is one of the materials I recently made two months ago for a realistic brick wall scene. There's a lot of details in these brick walls and if I zoom out from my grass for you to see, you're gonna realize something really awful. There's a lot of work behind it. You're not gonna be able to make all the details you need to create a super amazing astonishing brick wall with just some five nodes. You can make a nice pattern with some five nodes but you're not gonna be able to add all the details needed. 
yeah oh uh, you can see this is also killing my computer because it's almost taking 99 percent of my memory and it's also kind of uh, rendering the cache and i don't know how to stop it right now but everything i've done here you can see that it's specific to each step i saw in my reference I didn't take the edge teeth chipping only as one thing because I'm doing it here, but more in the more in the future in the graph, I'm also doing it again. For surface detail, I'm doing it again. Here you have like one surface detail. Here you have brick, uh, brick recap, which is also surface detail, but I just changed the name so it's a little more understandable for me. And then you have noise generator for surface detail as well for the bricks. Now, what people really believe is that they, if they make the bricks right, then the material is going to look right. But the secret is the combination between the materials and the mortar. You look here to my 3D viewport, you're going to see that the bricks are looking good, but the mortar is following the shape of my bricks. And that is the most important part because they are telling a story. A brick wall is a combination of these uh, kind of clay cubes we create plus the mortar that we put and the way we put the mortar and combine these things together is going to be essential to how you're making this so let me show you a little bit of how i do it so usually first i create a noise by its own self you can see here how i create it so basically there's a lot of things we need to take into this but we're going to see it in another chapter but the best part is that i am taking the information yes from my bricks and i'm inverting it that way my concrete is gonna follow exactly the negative space between the bricks after some editing and including into it the noise i created from my concrete I do some warpings to make this different and then I blend them together with a high blend. This is what makes the material so good because it's actually coming all together and they come from the same source, the brick pattern. So depending on how we actually got our bricks together is how our concrete is going to be working together as well. Sculpting the edges of your brick pattern is just a first step to building a bridge taking brick wall material. That is why if you need more help there's a free Discord community called FMA. In here you will find tons of learning content, help from actual professionals of AAA studios, and events like the one we are holding this month, the Rock and Stone Challenge, where you can participate for a lot of prizes from our sponsor, Fast Track Tutorials. You can join us by clicking on the link of the description of this video. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.